The lyrics just have touched my soul in such a way, and it reminded me of a scripture that I love so much in Isaiah 43. And the context of the scripture is God is talking to Israel in a time of trouble. And 
he's sharing some encouragement with him. And in the scripture in verse 16, it says, this is what the Lord says. He who made a way in the sea, he who split the sea open and caused your enemies to perish. Here's what I say. Forget the past. Don't dwell on it. See that I'm doing a new thing. And I want to remind every one of us today in this year that God's not done doing new things, y'all. He's not done doing new things in your marriage, at your job, at your home. But more importantly, he's not done doing a new thing in you. He's not doing a new he's not done doing a new thing in you. And so one thing that I love about this next song is that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Asking God for more, doing a new thing in me, having revival in my soul. And I want to tell you that God did a new thing 2,000 years ago. While every victory was marked by military defeat of an enemy, Jesus won victory by dying on a cross for us. And so as we take this communion together, I just want us to think on that death, to think on that life, to think on the victory that was won by seeming defeat. As you get your bread and your cup together, I just want you to reflect in your own heart today. Where is it that I need a new thing to be done? God, where do you want to move in my life today? How do you want to speak to me today? As we prepare to take the bread, I just want to remind us that this is Jesus' body, broken for us. As we take the bread, go ahead and just think on it and and take it as, as you're led. Thank you, Jesus. For a body broken for us, God. For the pain that you endured for us, Lord. He said, this is my blood shed for you, spilled out and poured out for you. It's not death, it's life, it's not defeat, it's victory. Go ahead and let's take the cup together. Our prayer partners, they're coming forward and man, if there's something that God's been stirring up in you, whether it be something that's hard or hurtful or something that's awesome and something to celebrate, I just want to encourage you. Come to the prayer partners and and just join with someone that is ready and prepared to come and walk alongside you. Our usher team's coming and they're passing buckets around to clean that trash. But let's go ahead and do this as we move in with the rest of this service. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And God, we thank you for the victory that you won on our behalf. Father, I pray that as we continue in worship, God, that we would learn how infinite and abundant your love is for us, the plans that you have for us, the blessing that you want to bestow upon us. Father, remind us that your pockets are deep and they're full of so much grace. We love you, Jesus. Bless this service with your presence. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and worship.
church, huh? Man, y'all sound good. You look good. Do me a favor. Turn to your neighbors. You find your seat. Give them a big hug. Say it's not COVID anymore. We can do this now. We can give hugs. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Go ahead and take your seats. Get comfy. Welcome home. Hey, we're so glad you're here at Vibrant Church today. Could you just help me and give all our first-time guests a big, warm, vibrant welcome? Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday. Hey, there could be so many places you could have chose to be, and we're honored that you'd spend Sunday here with us. Um, if you've been with us for a day, a month, a year, you've probably heard at least one person mention taking next steps. And one of the easiest next steps you can take is actually in the seat back pocket right in front of you. That connect card there is just a real handy way for us to get to know more about you, how we can be praying for you, equipping you and your family. So I'd encourage you, uh, fill one of those out so we can get plugged in and connected with you. And you can drop those as the ushers pass the offering buckets here in a few seconds. Uh, but if you're joining us online or you remember later, you can do so at vibranthtx.com slash card. Uh, immediately following this service is our uh, experience that we like to call Next. Uh, next step two is an opportunity to learn more about how God's gifted you and equipped you in order to do the work of his ministry. I encourage you, if you want to be a part of this house, what God's doing here, serving on the team, I encourage you to go and uh, do next. It's a whole lot of fun. And like I always say, they got snacks. Praise God. Snacks are the best. I sometimes steal them. Don't tell Pastor Michael. Oh, hey, Pastor Michael, what's up? I'm just kidding. Uh, I want to share three things with you before we move and continue in our time of worship. Uh, January serve day. Can you say that with me? January serve. All right, let's try this again. We're, we're a team. We're a unit. Okay. January serve. There we go. There we go. That sounds good. Uh, we're actually partnering with Interfaith of Woodlands, and there's a, a drop box in the lobby today that we can drop uh, food um, items, non-perishable food items. Uh, we're going to be donating to their food pantry, so I'd encourage you to be a part of what we're doing here at Vibrant, serving our community, and let's partner with Interfaith to do that. Uh, number two, baptisms are actually happening next Sunday. Uh, if you would like to make your private decision to follow Jesus public and say to the world, hey, I'm a follower of Christ, I would encourage you to sign up for baptisms and join us for that. And if you're not getting baptized, I encourage you to come to Baptism Sunday so we can make it the party that it is in heaven when someone gives their life to Jesus and is confident enough to say that publicly. It's going to be awesome and such a good time. And last but not least, uh, Life Group Launch Sunday is actually happening on the 21st and the 28th. So if you're interested in leading a group or you're interested in joining a group, I encourage you to head to Church Center ASAP and fill out some information. Go ahead and sign up for groups. It's going to be incredible. Is anyone blessed by their life group or leading a life group in the house? Anybody at all? Awesome. 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 Well, hey, let's do this. Uh, we're moving into a time of worship through our giving. And there's four really easy and convenient ways to give through Vibrant. Uh, number one, you can give through the Church Center app. You can give online at vibranthcx.com slash give. You can give uh, through texting, actually, texting the amount that you would like to give to 84321, or you can give as the offering buckets are passed here in a moment. I'll tell you this, trusting God is always a good decision, even in the area of our finances. So I would encourage you as we're giving today, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we love you so much. And God, your presence is in this room. Father, I pray that you would bless us continually with new revelation. Father, new rhema word. God, I pray that you would encourage us today and leave here to have us leave here today with more faith and more grace and more love. We love you, Jesus, and it's your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor. Turn your attention to the screen.
Survivor family, happy Sunday morning. Are you glad to be in church? Let me hear from you. Come on. You made it through Texas winter to get to church today. So shout out to you. I know we're seeing the news everywhere. It's snowing and icing. And we're thinking, man, if we could just get a little bit of that. And uh, so it, it, we're not going to get it. So you, this is not happening this year. So it's all right. And uh, I'm glad that you came to church. It is nice and toasty in here. Glad you're here. If we've not had the opportunity to meet, my name is Michael. My wife, Carmen, and I, we have the honor and privilege to serve this church as lead pastors. And we're glad you're here. Can we welcome all of our guests? Thank you for being here. Come on, let's do it. Your guest today, we welcome you. So glad you're here. I got a lot I want to share with you today. But before we jump into the message, I want to share two things. Uh, number one is uh, we in just two weeks, uh, we're starting our Reveal Revival Nights. In two weeks, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, January 29th, 30th, and 31st, right here at the Woodlands Campus at 6.30 every night. We're going to be doing a three-day fast as a church. And so we're going to be talking more about that, what that looks like. I want you to jump in here with us. We've got guest speakers Monday night. Our lead overseer, Pastor Nathan Keating from Lumberton, Texas, is going to be here. Excited about that? Slumberton in the house. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that, Tuesday night, uh, we've got one of my one of my very best friends in the entire world. Uh, his name is Chuck Martin. He pastors Glory Bell Church in Waco, Texas. He's going to be preaching right here Tuesday night, and then Wednesday night we're going to have an incredible worship night. Uh, it's going to be uh, just our worship teams have prepped, and and it's just going to be a great night where we're just uh, getting in the presence of the Lord and letting Him uh, reveal new things for us, letting Him reveal next steps for our lives and, and, and reveal just a strategic vision for our hearts, or our careers, our families, and, and just excited about that. So I want you to make room for reveal. Uh, both campuses will be coming together. We're going to put out as many seats as we own in this room. And so there'll be plenty of room. We do have kids ministry. Uh, and so I want you to make room for it. If you have plans, those Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, cancel the plans, bring those people with those plans with you to here. Okay. Bring them here. It's going to be great. Excited about it. And uh, I have been, Carmen and I had some really great meetings with our overseers this week, and as well as our brand new trustees that were elected from within our church. And we're going to be introducing our trustees to you over the next few weeks. I'm very, very excited about that growth, uh, just growth of our church and growth as our church and the organization of our church has created some new opportunity for people to step into leadership and excited about where God is taking us. Amen. Amen. So last week we introduced our word of the year uh, for our church as a part of this series, the best you. How many of you want to be your best this year? You want to be your best? You know, I want to be my best. We want to be our best, right? Our, our word of the year is, is a little different than what you would think. Our word of the year is actually rest. Now, I've heard some people say, hey, what, what do you mean rest? Uh, does that mean we're just like not doing anything or we're just not, we don't have first vision? That's not what that means. That word rest is not actually a rest, for, a, not a rest from life, but is a rest in life. It means that we have a restful spirit, that, that a restful spirit is a revived spirit. And so this theme verse is Matthew 11, uh, verse 28 through 30. Uh, and we preached this last week, so you can go and check it out on YouTube. YouTube, uh, but it, it's this, this idea or this concept comes from these verses. It says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened. So many of you have entered this year weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come. The next verse, verse 29, it says, take my yoke upon you and, and learn from me. Come, take and learn for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. What he did, what he, what he said there was not that you'll find rest and no productivity and you'll just watch Netflix all the time. That's not what he said. You'll find you rest. You'll find rest for your souls. What that means is the best you will require rest from you. Rest from you. And that doesn't mean for you to stop. It means for you to rest in who he is and exactly and only what he's called you to do. That allows his spirit to work in you, but spiritual growth never happens on accident. Amen. 
Never happens on accident. If you're not deliberate, you'll be default. We talked about that last week. Default, a default life is heavy. A default life is broken. A default life is anxious. It's stressed. It's broke. It's not living God's best for your life, but an intentional life. An intentional spiritual life is aspiring and it's inspiring. The devotion of your heart will determine the direction of your life. So we are deliberate about stopping long enough to listen to the voice of God about exactly and only what he's telling us to do. Coming to him, taking from him, learning from him. In that rest, something happens in us. We grow, we mature. Rest uncovers beauty in your life. You start to see clearly. Rest, it makes your life full of life. I would say it this way, and this is kind of the two word summary of this entire series, is that rest reveals. Rest reveals. Over the next three weeks, we're going to talk about a few things that rest reveals in our life. Next week, we're going to talk about how rest reveals trust in God. Then we'll close out this series with rest reveals freedom. Today, we're going to talk that, that rest reveals fresh vision, fresh vision, rest reveals fresh vision. We live in a world that is all about the hustle and grind. Y'all know that? It is all about keeping up with who is around you, keeping up with the business that is around you, keeping up with the neighbor that is around you. I, I mean, I, the, the new year is an, uh, it's another opportunity for people to just ramp that up, right? And so as, well, this is my new year's resolution. Well, I, hey, but mine's not, I didn't really don't feel like I need to do that, but because you're doing it, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to step mine up. Have you ever seen those people that like make rhyming? statements for the new year you know what I'm talking about like like 2024 they're like look for more in 24 you know so they all sound like political campaigns all right that's what they all sound like and, and what I've noticed is these these people are like open door 24 uh, restore in 24 shaking the core in 24 I, 24 has good things in store I, <laughs> We're going to soar in 24, I, 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 ready for war in 24. No, I, hopefully not. Hopefully not, okay? But um, the truth is, is that much of this hustle and, and grind mentality can lead you down a path that's not healthy for your life spiritually. It can lead you down a path that is not healthy. I'll ask you a challenging question that not many people are willing to ask you. In the middle of a season that is about... The new year, everybody's like, press, 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 go, go, stretch, da, 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 all these things. Let me ask you a question that we challenge. What if it's not your time for what's next? What if? What if this is a time for you to be in a season of preparation and discipling? A season of resting in him and learning and being discipled. I got to thinking, uh, my kids, like, they watch a lot of nature shows. When I say a lot, I mean, like, we keep National Geographic in business. Now, somebody that watches my kids on a consistent basis is shaking her head yes right now because she knows she turns the shows on for them, right? So, like, I, like, I got to thinking, it's, it's like bears. Stay with me. Okay. Bears hibernate a long time. And bears are like big dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like bears are big. Okay. Uh, why do bears hibernate? Is it because it's cold? No, they're big. You got a lot of fur, got a lot of whatever. They primarily hibernate because they're saving their energy because their food that they are hunting is not out in the winter. They're high, the, 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 their food that they're looking to find is not out in the winter. It comes out in the spring. So they are preparing for their time. What if what is next in your life isn't right now, but it's in a couple of months or a year? If we're not careful, hustle can lead us to hurt because we feel like we always got to keep up and we always got to be taking ground and breaking ground and building and doing all the, getting the next thing. And, and what happens is when we take ground, when we're not ready for it, or the ground is not ready to be taken, we could die in the cold because what we're chasing isn't ready for us. What God is developing for you 
is going to come on his time. And just because he's not on your time doesn't mean that he's not on time. See, God's never late, never early. So what if we stopped rushing him into our next? God, come on. Hurry up, God. I'm ready. Are you? Are you? I mean, instead, what if we rested in right where he has us right now? And we were okay right where he had us now so we can listen to his voice and recognize what is next. I find this interesting. David said in in Psalm 131, it says this. I'll read the entire Psalm to to you, but we're gonna take it verse by verse today. Um, Verse one says, my heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me, but I have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child with his mother. Like a weaned child, I'm content. Israel, put your hope in the Lord both now and forevermore. And the translation of that first part, that first verse, my heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. The translation here, he's saying, I'm, I'm not looking at, at things beyond the stage of where I'm at right now because as a a driven person, as a person that wants to be successful, I am tempted to look beyond the stage where I am right now. I am tempted, tempted to lust after the things that are beyond the stage that God has given us. There are things in your future that are too wonderful for where you're at right now. That's what David said. God is preparing wonderful things for you in your future that need to be, they need to be prepared for you. They need to be prepared. The key to getting those things is resting where he has you right now. Can you rest with the things that he's put right in front of you? Can you imagine this for a moment? Imagine climbing a ladder, but the bottom of the ladder is not built correctly. It's not built. The foundation of the ladder is not built all the way. What's going to happen? That's going to fall over because it does not matter how high you climb to the top. If that foundation is not strong, you're going to fall. The genesis of hustle culture is pride. Well, pastor, you don't know how talented I am. You don't know how high I can climb. You don't know how great my business is doing. That's great. That's awesome. I love it. Well, I'm an overachiever. I'm super gifted. I love it. We always want more. I love it. What if in this season, you might be supposed to be able to rest and grow and be discipled and what he already gave you right now? What if you looked back this year and there wasn't any growth in your business and there wasn't any growth in your finances, but you were more healthy spiritually at the end of this year than you walked into? Would that be a win? Let me ask you a challenging question. Do you trust your talents more than you trust his timing? I I just, I I know this is counter culture. I know this is counter like Rah, 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 gotta go, gotta get, gotta stretch, gotta do all the things. But I feel like we need to have a different spirit rise up in us. A spirit of David that says, I'm not proud. I'm resting in where he has me. I'm not overreaching. I'm content in a growing season. I am content to be discipled. Now, I will tell you, every person in this room is is in a different, different season in your life, your career, your ministry, your calling, all of those things. For some of you, you are in a harvest season. It is your time to run. And, and, and to you, I tell you, you've been in a preparation season. I, I tell you, like rest in him in that season. That's great. God gifted you that. Run, run. But for many of you, you have been running for years. And some of you have just been looking for a, 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 a permission to rest in what God already gave you. A permission to be in a preparation season. It's time to grow. 
For others in here, you're in a preparation season. It's time to grow in your knowledge and your wisdom to save financially for for what is next, to rest in him in that season. There are seasons in life, and I believe the key in living in victory through all seasons is embracing the seasons and not trying to break the seasons. Embrace the seasons of growth. Don't try to break the seasons of growth. It's healthy. Uh, uh, Let me give you a personal example. I coach church planters and pastors, and it's one of the many things that I love that I get to do. Um, God has given me the opportunity to do, and and I'm honored to do it. But uh, many of the churches that we coach, that uh, my wife and I, we coach their pastors, and and, uh, we're an influence on their lives just by the grace of God. Many of the churches that we coach are way beyond us from a size perspective. I coach church planters and pastors of thousands and thousands of people, thousands and thousands of people. Now, if I listened as a pastor, as somebody that is driven, I'm a driven man. My wife is driven. We are driven leaders. As driven leaders, if we listen to hustle culture, hustle culture would tell me, well, you don't have that many people in your church as they do, so you need to catch up. Your influence is tied to that, so you need to catch up. You're not doing enough. You need to push, 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 go, 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 do whatever you have to do. And it doesn't matter if your family is unhealthy, you need to catch up. It doesn't matter if your kids like you or not, you need to catch up. It doesn't matter when anything, no, that's an unhealthy mindset. See, it's really easy for you to see it in my life, but can you see it in your life? Can you see it in your life? See, the first four years and going into five years of our church have been, we've been in harvest mode. We've been in harvest mode. We've been reaching, we've been planting, we've been starting, we've been pioneering. As I was prepping uh, for this year, sitting in San Antonio like a kid at Christmas, okay, God, what is next? God, clear as day, gave me a word for his church, for this church as the under shepherd of this church. And then as I went to meet with our overseers to talk with them about this year, our lead overseer confirmed that exact word without me even telling him. Well, Well, pastor, that doesn't sound like very exciting. Maybe it's not. But if we walk out of this year more healthy than we went into it, that's a win to me. Well, what happens if we don't, we don't, well, you know, we're not going to reach a thousand people this year. That's okay. But if every person in this room and at both campuses are more healthy spiritually than what we walked into 24, that's a win in my book. We're resting in what God gave us. We're resting, we're building, we're growing. We're gonna do exactly and only what God called us to do. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna, we're gonna have more life groups than we've ever done because that's exactly what God called us to, is community. We're gonna see more people saved than we've ever seen because God called us to pull people to him. We are going to have bit larger teams than ever because people in this church are going to be to discipled into teams. I'm done with consumer mentality. I'm going to jump into disciple mentality. You're a part of this church. I'm going to jump in. We're going to do the things that we are called to do. Well, pastor, why don't we do this? Why don't we do all these things? Because we're not called to it. For you to do, for you to know what is next, you must master what is now. I got to preach quickly. Uh, I believe this next part of the scripture is important here. And this is verse two. It says, I have quieted and calmed and quieted myself, calm and quiet. Can I tell you, you can't be hustling and hurrying and calm and quiet at the same time. It's impossible. I want you to do this exercise with me. I want everybody around the room, go ahead. This is gonna be awkward. I'm just gonna tell you right now, up front, it's gonna be awkward. Close your eyes, close your eyes. Everybody, nobody looking around, 100% participation. I want you to close your eyes and we're gonna stay silent for 15 seconds. Man, that felt weird, didn't it? You can open your eyes. That felt weird, didn't it? You know why it felt weird? It's because we as Americans are so awful at calming and quieting ourselves. But it's in that place we listen and we hear the voice of God. There was a a man that I met at our Christmas services this year that uh, he had, he serves in the military and he just came from back from Japan and I was asking him about it. And he told me, he said, without like, without hesitation, he said, I wish I could go back like today. I was like, why, why, why do you want to go back? He said, it's so loud here. 
everywhere is loud. Everywhere is loud. That moment that we just had of calm and of quiet was probably the clearest you may have thought all week, maybe all month, right there in those 15 seconds. But we don't make time enough for calm and quiet. Now add a prayerful heart to a time of calm and quiet, and it would be a game changer in your life. The devotion of your heart will determine the direction of your life. What if every day you took, just start with three minutes, three minutes and stopped intentionally creating an environment in your home, uh, in your car, in your, I don't care where, in your cubicle at work, I don't care where, three minutes, intentional, calm and quiet in the presence of God. No music, no socials, no TV, No kids, come on somebody, right? What would happen is in this next verse, it says, I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. In quiet and calmness, you'll find contentment. See, this doesn't have to be your busiest year to be your best year. This doesn't have to be your heaviest year to be your your most productive year. It doesn't have to be. I don't think it's a coincidence that Jesus also said that if when you if you're going to come to me, it's best for you to come to me as a child. There's something like something about childlike faith. It is childlike rest, childlike trust. A child relies on instruction for what is next. From a parent or a protector, that's what rest will reveal for us. When we rest in him, we get instruction for what's next. We start to see what is next. I'm content in what you gave me, where you have me, what mission you gave me. There is a rest in a childlike spirit. And I believe it would be healthy for us as a church to get back to childlike faith. Get back to childlike faith. A child will trust a parent even when there are things that they don't understand. A child will follow a parent because safety is attached to it. Mark 10 and 15, truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. You know what? I want to apply that scripture to what's next in your life. You can't find out what is next. You can't step into what is next unless you step into his presence as a child. Because if he won't give you the kingdom of heaven without a childlike spirit, he's surely not going to give you his favor and blessing on this work, on this earth. You want what's best for your life? You want to be the best you? Get back to having a childlike spirit and then maybe not having everything figured out. Maybe being willing to get back in his presence and say, God, I don't know what 10 years from now looks like and I'm okay with it. You know, our overseers, we were talking this week about, okay, I, I, I'll be transparent with you. We have two and a half years left on the lease on this building. What are we going to do? This lease keeps growing. They keep ballooning and it keeps getting more expensive. What are we going to do? How are we going to make it work? And I, I was telling our overseers, I'm a little worried about it. I'm a little nervous. I lose a little sleep about it. And two, our, uh, two of our overseers both said, hey, Michael, you need to understand sometimes there's a little power in just not knowing and just going with what God has for you. It doesn't mean that there's a lack of vision. It means that God's in control and I'm not. And I'm okay with it. I've got to be, and and I know it's really easy for y'all to see that in my situation, see that here. But what about in your own life? You don't know what 10 years looks like from now? Do you know what now looks like? Are you content in what he gave you right now? You probably won't see 10 years from now until you're content in what he gave you right now. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. I, I'm a, I, I feel a childlike spirit, a childlike spirit. Three things that I see from a childlike spirit that you and I need to live out. Number one, a childlike spirit dreams big, dreams big, dreams big. Have you ever asked a kid what they want to be when they grow up? Yesterday, I asked uh, my, my oldest son turned nine, which is crazy to me. I have a nine-year-old son. I was like nine, like just not long ago. So, uh, but I, I asked my nine-year-old, I was like, all right, hey, dude, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, what do you want to be? He was like, I want to be an astronaut and I want to be a billionaire. I was like, okay, all right, sign him up for that because he can, you know, I, I live at his house. Um, 
And, uh, but so I said, so essentially he wants to be Elon Musk, right? <laughs> but this kid dreams big because he doesn't know any better, right? He's got parents telling him, hey, you can do anything you want to do. Anything you want. You're smart. You're talented. You got parents that love you. You got family. Love you. Like you can do, they see big possibilities and they hear you can do anything from their parents. So they believe it. But then we grow up as adults and we restrict what God wants to do in our life because we simply don't believe it's possible. We start listening to the wrong voices. We start, instead of listening to the voice of God in your life that speaks faith and and nothing is impossible and, and I've given you great favor, we start to live our life as if we're listening to our enemies, the people that hurt you, or maybe even the failures that you've experienced in your own world. I love the story of Joseph. God gives him a dream that he's going to be a leader, one that he would impact and lead his entire family. His brothers hated it so much that he sold, they sold him into slavery, okay? And so uh, you think your family's bad. And so uh, God gave him the ability to interpret dreams and, and he ends up serving in the, in the king's home only to be sexually assaulted and imprisoned for refusing Potiphar's wife. And, and the guy that was going to help him get out of prison totally forgot about him once he got him out and, and And his brothers forgot all about it, but then through it all, I'm giving you like the 30,000 foot view, through it all, he went from being a prisoner to being a prince. He had a big dream and that dream never died. No matter what he was going through, can you imagine? He ended up saving his entire family and his brothers from a famine uh, and that dream came to pass. But what would have happened in Joseph's life if he listened to his brothers? If he listened to the naysayers, if he listened to the people that were his enemies in the time, the dream wouldn't have happened, but he rested in the dream that God gave him. What would have happened if he listened to all the people who told him that he tried to rape Potiphar's wife? He rested in the dream that God gave him. The voice you listen to will determine the future that you experience. You know what the voice of God says about you? You know what the voice of God says about you? Let me show it to you. I, I have it written in the in I have it in written form, the Bible. Let me show it to you. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now to him who is able. How many of y'all know he's able? We got a God that is able. To carry out his purpose and do. I, I love this version. This is the Amplified Bible, okay? It says super abundantly. I didn't even know that was a word. But I like it. Super abundantly. More than all we dare ask or think that's the things that God wants to do through you. That's what God wants to do through your family. That's what God wants to do through your kids. That's what God wants to do through your marriage. That's what God wants to do through you. But too many times we live as if we were supposed to be beggars. You live as a beggar when God called you to dream as a child of God. Our greatest, uh, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams. But it's not just about us according to, oh, how talented I am. Oh, how good looking I am. All the resources I have. Oh, you don't know how my family is built. You don't know all uh, the business I built. No, according to his power. Can I tell you that everything you have, everything you got, everywhere you're going, it's all in his hand, in his power that is at work within us. He is at work today. I've come to remind somebody today, (coughs) excuse me, that, uh, that faith in Jesus can move mountains in your life. Somebody has come in today feeling like you were supposed to live as a beggar and you needed a reminder that the God of heaven, your savior and your Lord wants what's best for you. And if he calls you to it, he will see you through it. God has great things ahead for you, but you don't have to press to get there. You don't have to push God if you will rest in him. You don't have to stress to get there. You have to rest in him. Now to him that is able. Now to him that is able. You you want fresh vision for your life? Now to him that is able. Rest in him. You want healing in your body? God, hurry up. Why haven't you healed me yet? Rest in him. 
You want healing in your relationships? Well, God, I mean, I, why isn't this thing fixed yet? Why isn't, hey, why haven't they admitted they were wrong yet? Why haven't they, I, 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 they haven't forgiven me yet? Rest in him. Dream big for what he's given you. Number two, a childlike spirit is passionate about what's in front of them. Passionate. You know, last week we had our dream team party. And if you were, you're part of the dream team, we had a good time. That's a lot of fun. Did a rodeo disco. Man, I didn't know some of y'all could dance like that. That was crazy. Um, But our staff and some of our team, uh, we were up here all day that Saturday. We had pray first and then we, we set up all day. And so uh, most of our staff has kids. And so what we did was we brought our kids all up here and, and, you know, in ministry kids, they're just used to being here at the church. And so you pack a lunch, you know what I'm saying? You bring all the things, you bring the things to keep them entertained and you get them shows and like you try to figure it out where you can get your work done. And, and we were doing all of that. Well, uh, Pastor Tori decided she started blowing up balloons in the, the lobby out there for our dream team party. Well, instantly, as soon as it was like they heard it in their spirit. As soon as they started blowing up balloons, them kids all came to the lobby and they all start taking ownership of the balloons, right? And the, like these balloons, they were figuring out what they could do with the balloon. Y'all, I still have a balloon in my house right now that has a face on it from Dream Team Party and it has a name and I'm pretty sure I'm giving it allowance somehow. Like I, these kids are passionate about what's in front of them. They see what it is. They're like, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this with it. They took a balloon and made a village. Creativity. These kids are passionate about what's in front of them. They're not overwhelmed or thinking about what this balloon's going to look like four months from now. They're not. They're thinking about how in the world can I do the coolest thing that I can do with this particular balloon that I have. This is childlike passion. I see this in Joseph's story. No matter what his environment was, he was passionate about what God gave him right in front of him. Knowing the dream that was coming, he was passionate about what was right in front of him. When he was in slavery, he found a way to honor God with what he gave him. When he was in Potiphar's home, he found a way to honor God with what he gave him. When he was back in prison, he found a way to honor God with what he gave him. Joseph's passion for what he could see, unlocked possibilities that he couldn't see. Some of y'all need to hear that again. Joseph's passion for what he could see, unlocked possibilities for what he could not see yet. He couldn't see a pathway to the dream to come to pass, but God gave him an ability to interpret dreams that created advancement. He was passionate about it. Some of you today need to stop obsessing about what's going to happen 5, 10, 15, 25 years from now and rest in what God is doing right now. Well, you know, pastor, I've got a goal to have a multi-million dollar business one day. That's great. But what are you going to do with the one client that you have today? Are you going to be passionate about it? Romans 12 and 11, be enthusiastic to serve the Lord. We serve the Lord through everything that he's given us. We serve the Lord through everything. Be enthusiastic to serve the Lord. Keeping your passion toward him boiling hot. Radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit and let him fill you with excitement as you serve him. When you're passionate about what God gave you today, it'll create an excitement for what he's going to give you tomorrow. Too many of us are so worried about what's next that we haven't mastered what's now. I believe a childlike spirit allows us to be laser focused on what, what's right in front of us. And it frees us to trust God with the rest. We don't have to worry about it. We give God our absolute best. We rest with what he has given us right now, with what he's put right in front of us. And we'll notice what's in front of us will grow. You want worry, less worry and less stress in your life? I do. I do. Get passionate. Go go back to being passionate about what God gave you right in front of you. What's right in front of your eyes. You want to be your best you? Some of you need to go back to the balloon that God gave you. And you you need to say, all right, God, you gave me this balloon. What can I do with a balloon? You gave me, 
I, you gave me this talent. You gave me this business. You gave me this career. You gave me this opportunity. You gave me this family. You gave me this kid. This, that, 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 all these things. This is my balloon. I'm going to be passionate about what's right in front of me. That's when I say as our church, that word rest doesn't mean not do anything. It means to be very passionate about what's right in front of us. You know what's right in front of us? You. We're going to focus on discipling you. We're going to focus on connecting you. We're going to focus on growing you and your family. That's why I encourage every one of you that have not been through freedom. Freedom starts in two weeks. Freedom starts in two weeks. You need to be in freedom. Freedom is one of our biggest and best life groups that, that you can be a part of. You need to be a part of freedom. It is a huge part of your discipleship process. Those of you that have been through freedom, let me encourage you. You need to lead a freedom group because we got a lot of people that haven't been through freedom. I need you to lead a freedom group. If you're not leading a freedom group, I need you to lead a different group that you're discipling people, bringing people in. You can be ex- you got to be passionate about what's right in front of you. What's right in front of you. You know, the very first message that I ever preached was in Durant, Mississippi. And if you're there and you're watching, God bless you. There's like four people live there, but I, there was literally 17 people there, 17. And there was a tape that I used to have that nobody will ever get because it is the worst message that you've ever heard in your life. Not even sure it's biblical. No, I'm just kidding. I, like, I tried my hardest. I was in Bible college. I was learning. I was, but it was 17 people. Can I, can I tell you, I preached that message to 17 people like it was 1,700. I did. In fact, the next day, my voice was so gone. Pastor Don, you know what it's like. I preached so hard. I sounded like a 12-year-old boy. I, like, ah, 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 I couldn't even hardly talk. My, I, I'm passionate, right? If you're passionate with what God gave you today, it will grow and it will go. Stop being so obsessed with what is next. Be passionate about what he gave you today. Stand with me so I'll quit. <laughs> The third, the third point of a childlike spirit is that a childlike spirit is full of joy. Can y'all do something for me? Can y'all like, can y'all smile? Huh? Can we smile? Is it okay to smile in church? Is that all right? Is that a good? Look, look, y'all got some good looking smiles. Even you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just messing. I'm messing. I'm messing. Y'all just some good looking people. You know, we got... This church is full of kids. If you don't believe me, if we're quiet enough, we could probably hear them in kids ministry, okay? We are full of kids. In fact, after church, after church, you'll probably see and hear kids running around this church and they're probably screaming and their parents are probably close behind them saying, stop running, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's probably what's happening. We got kids everywhere. You, you know, the thing that I love about that is that these kids that are running around are so full of joy. They're full of joy. What if we, as adults, who have tried to live our life like we've got it all figured out, we've got all our ducks in a row, all of our ducks in a row. What if you don't have your ducks in a row? You can still have joy. You know, what's really cool is Jesus didn't say, Everybody who comes to me needs to make sure that they're dressed proper, that they've got all the right things, that they've, they're, they're living their life in the right way, doing things all perfect. And if they do all of that, I will bring them some rest. No. Jesus simply said, I want you to come to me like a child. You know how a child comes to you? They are loud. They are sloppy. They are bold. They're probably just going, they're going to run so hard at you. They're going to hit you and tackle you. You know what I'm talking about? Right? Man, I've I've got something else, but I just feel like, I'm sorry, media team, I'm going off the script. I felt this in worship earlier, and I just want to share it with you. I feel like there's somebody in this house that needs to run back into his presence. That needs to be desperate for his presence again. 
You're doing all the things. You've got all the things. You, you, everything. You, you're even maybe you're you're focused in on devoting your life to Him, and you, you're spending your quiet times with Him, and it's awesome. But you need a transformative experience with the Spirit of God. Yesterday, last night, I don't know if y'all watched this. Did y'all watch that football game last night in Kansas City? Did y'all watch these dudes? It was negative four degrees outside with a wind chill of negative 31. And I saw a man, they, I mean, the news guys were telling me, if you, are, if you have exposed skin for 10 minutes, your skin will have frostbite. And these dudes were out there with no shirt on. Like, God bless him. He's probably in the hospital right now. I just, I, all of that, all that screaming their guts out, probably inebriated, just like going nuts to spend thousands of dollars so they could sit in the front row and they're like, ah, this is awesome. I'm so cold. I can't feel my body. This is great. All screaming for sports. And I, I, I support sports, okay? I'm not against sports, okay? They're going to walk away from that experience unchanged, except for hurt physically, right? On a Sunday like this, where the presence of God, the, the presence of our holy God, who can change everything, who can move mountains in your life, who can give you hope, is in this house. And the only thing that you could walk out of here with is hope, with encouragement and, and, and strength for your tomorrow. And too many times as church people, we go, well, I wish he'd hurry up so we can go to lunch. Church, I got to tell you, you know what this word rest means for me? It means that I want our church to be desperate for his presence again. Desperate for his presence again. The, the, the last scripture that it, it ended in Psalms 131, media team, throw that last scripture up there. It says, Psalm 131, the last, last verse. You don't have that? Here, let me get it to you. All right. This is verse, verse three here says, Israel, put your hope in the Lord both now and forevermore. Can I tell you, there is nothing in this world that is worth your hope. Nothing in this world that is worth your hope, but heaven is in this room and he is worth your hope. Heaven is in this room and he's worth your hope. If you were to be honest today, if you were to be honest, would you be willing to say, hey, I need a touch from heaven today. I need, I need, I need, I need something that comes from God. I need something that is, come on, be across the room. You need to, you're saying, I need, I need something that is more than just kind of a, hey, we're going to sing a song. I need, I need something from God. I need to be touched from heaven. I need a touch from Jesus in there. That's beautiful. Here's what I want you to do. I, this is off the script and my team, I'm sorry, we're going for it. Every person, just raise your hand. I want you at this altar right now. Come on, come on, come on. Everybody, 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 make room, make room. Come on, make room. Team, come on, come on. We're about to sing. We're about to sing. Prayer team, I want you to come around. Prayer team, I want you to come around. We're going to pray with folks today. Every person, you need a touch from heaven. Let me just tell you, the God of heaven is in this room. Revival is in this room. Revival is not a service. Revival is a God that comes in you to revive your spirit. Revive your life. Revive the dreams that he has in you. Revive your family. Revive your calling. Revive your purpose. Revive your destiny. And it can happen in this house. It can happen in this house. There is nothing in this world worth your hope except for Jesus. What I want you to do right now, if you are desperate for his presence, you are desperate for a, for a touch from God, I want you to throw your hands up as high as you can get it in the air. And right now, I want you to simply say, God, I rest in your presence. I rest in your presence. I'm not happy with anything else in this world. I need more of you. I want more of you in my life. I've got to have more of you in my family. I've got to have more of you in my job. I've got to have more of you in my parenting. I'm not satisfied where I am. I need more of you, God. Come on, church, can you cry out to him? Don't follow a script that somebody else is saying, but use your instrument of praise. Use your instrument of praise right now and lift up the God of heaven. Press
into his presence. 